Well, uh, good morning and uh, welcome to Strategies for Propaganda and uh, Visual Communication. Uh, in this first session, part one, there will be, um, I believe there will be three uh, presenters, but I'm looking for Mr. Mats Elzinger. Oh, I'm here. Yes. Very good. Okay. Thank you. Pleased to meet you. Uh, the first presenter will be uh, Dr. Algis Makunis, who will be speaking on the principles of propaganda, Dr. Makunis. Uh, the second presenter will be uh, Dr. John Murphy, who will be speaking about the tales about social class and the reorganization of society, Dr. Murphy. And of course, uh, Mr. Elzinga, who just conveniently disappeared again. He um, went to prepare his papers. Okay. <laughs> well, he has nothing to worry about. These two will talk so long. We have plenty of time. <laughs> okay. uh, he will be speaking on the propaganda and communication from the Dutch perspective. I, of course, will attempt to moderate this session of mighty minds and mighty mouths. <laughs> Um, <laughs> and um, I think with no further ado, um, Dr. Makunis and the principles of propaganda. Please. Do I have to stand there to be shot? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Oh, yeah. To be shot. <laughs> to be shot. <laughs> yes, to be shot. Our sharpshooters to line you up real good. <laughs> Oh, I don't need it. I am loud mouth, as you said. <laughs> okay, so I was given the task, or I appointed myself to the task, to speak about enforced principles, and that's what uh, philosophers attempt to do, pretending that they know something, otherwise there's nothing to say. Uh, so first thing about uh, 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 general uh, theme, uh, we are, as a human beings, uh, very peculiar entities, um, as uh, we all know. Uh, we know who we are, we have our identities, right? Uh, and uh, no matter where you go, uh, you introduce yourself, you are uh, um, Mary Tyler, and uh, you're an actress, and uh, say hello, and so on. And uh, you are Lithuanian, uh, maybe even Christian, maybe Muslim, uh, maybe Jewish, maybe uh, pagan, like Lithuanians are. Anyway, we know who we are. We have what is known as identity. Now, and we, if you push that question of identity to the limit, we recognize that we acquire our identity through rituals. That is, when you were born, uh, nobody asked you. Uh, uh, you looked up, uh, and there was a calendar that said, "Oh, yeah, that's the date I'm born on." <laughs> that's already an inscription to say, uh, "So and so born on that date," and then they innocently take you to a place, and there is a shaman, or they dress in robes and they make all kinds of signs over you, they name you, and you become a name, uh, part of a tribe, part of a, a cult, personality cult, like Christianity, you know who you are. And throughout your life, you acquire broader identity, right? You become a student, you uh, become a professional, uh, I mean, when, when you introduce yourselves and uh, somebody says, well, who are you? Well, uh, I'm a teacher. Oh, that's nice to know. I mean, is that by nature or is that by ritual? You went through rituals to become a teacher. Okay. I'm talking now about identity. So identity is not somehow inborn, but acquired. I mean, philosophers will push the question, if, if, is, is that all there is? I will not do that. I will not bore you with uh, uh, transcendental argumentation. Uh, that would uh, put you to sleep immediately. Maybe that's a good thing, too. Uh, but what is interesting about the next step 
that attempt to give us the liberty a specific identity. And that is advertisements, propaganda. I remember when I first came to Lithuania right after the uh, revolution. Uh, you people are very strange. You destroyed such a great empire. Uh, the French hate you. The French cannot stand you because the French said, Lithuanians are barbarians. You've got name, you've got a new identity. Because they destroyed such a wonderful uh, uh, Soviet Union. Workers paradise. Okay. So now, uh, there were two different body types. The Soviet body type that, uh, and it's uh, like a colleague said, you know, they try to play with our minds. They play with the body too, the body style. Uh, you could see the Soviet uh, ladies uh, walking, like carrying two buckets or two bags, heavy. Uh, and then you see the new generation. They immediately accepted and wanted to become Western. Where did they get that new identity? Mass media. How do boys and girls look? How they must look? They have to learn how to walk. Very differently. I mean, uh, I was in Vilnius, uh, uh, near Rokeshe, uh, there's this big restaurant uh, outside, you know, the lots of beer, that's fantastic. And I was sitting with a colleague, uh, you know him, Saudi Zhukas, Bantos uh, Lankos, and uh, I was guzzling uh, Uzbona, <laughs> pitcher of beer, and he says, look at that. Aren't our girls beautiful now? Huh? No, put my glasses off. My glasses may be wrong. And there comes one. Now your girls have settled down. But there comes one. <coughs> put a nose up. High heels. Almost tripping. <laughs> but wow, hey, did you guys get this from Paris or something? A model? <clears throat> Look again. Another one. Exactly the same. Winging. Look at the third one. The same. And then there comes a fourth one and says, it's getting boring. <laughs> <laughs> they all became models, okay? They through the mass media, they just inscribed in their bodies how a young woman must look. And it's very uncomfortable to walk that way. I mean, my goodness, it's like walk before a mirror, train yourself. But that was already inscription from advertisements. Okay? That it didn't take any effort, it's the look. And so it is not uh, just uh, minds that got transformed. No, I think bodies got transformed before the minds. They became those bodies. They didn't know why, but they saw the images. And the images became a requirement, something to achieve. And as you know, in the general um, advertisement, you will never be adequate to the latest image. You will always have to strive. Oh, look at the latest image. Look at Madonna, uh, or Gugu, or whatever, <laughs> or Gaga, <laughs> or Schwarzenegger. <laughs> <laughs> and, and what happens is, uh, and the guys, too. And they were uh, sort of like uh, Soviet, uh, like peasants. You walk, you smoke your cigarettes, uh, one after the other. But then they saw Schwarzenegger or the Rambo and things like that, and all the boys uh, 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 grunting. <laughs> and they had to, they, 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 they didn't uh, act like, hey, how are you doing? 
mean, you know, they look at you as if you were an enemy number one. <laughs> so they acquired their look, their walk, their manners, their identity from images. It is like I mentioned initially, when you were born, you acquired your identity through rituals, uh, name giving, and uh, uh, sanctioned by a shaman uh, or a judge, it doesn't matter who it was, uh, got your certificate, and you knew who you are. But now the second level is coming from images, mass media images, uh, how to look. Uh, how to look pious, how to uh, kneel, how to stand, and all of that. So that identity is not a given, but borrowed and inscribed not only in your thinking, but in your body. Okay? In fact, what you wear is also a sign of image. Uh, in uh, during Soviet times, uh, you don't remember, uh, but uh, if a tourist American would come to Moscow, or in fact Vilnius, never any place else, and if he wore jeans, and he wore jeans that night, he would be robbed of his jeans, because <laughs> the one who could wear jeans would be very important a sign that I'm important, I have American genes. You could have thousand dollars in your pocket, who needs it but the genes? In fact, as uh, the tourists started coming, I know from the Lithuanian side, they would take a huge box, you know, suitcase, as presents to friends' genes. You had to have a look. Uh, your poet, Thomas Kanslova, uh, he came uh, to the United States and I sort of found him a position at my university and he insisted that he will wear nothing but jeans. <laughs> that was a sign. He saw the images of Americans in jeans. Okay. So, he acquired a new identity, an uh, uh, American poet, but with the right kind of image. Okay. So image is, right, but what I'm saying is the image is, uh, uh, advertisement image, is not just what we must think, but what we must become concretely, like the whole being, the way you feel. Uh, uh, Americans are very uh, tortured because the Constitution requires that we must be happy. And uh, it's, it's written in, and you cannot be unhappy. That's un-American. You must smile. And all the time smile. That is a condition for being American. <laughs> you know, mass media, uh, and uh, what the uh, uh, anchor people, usually ladies, and uh, today, uh, 2,000 people died uh, in Sri Lanka. <laughs> what? That is a requirement. So, uh, uh, I have a Russian colleague, uh, I mean, he was, he came to the United States maybe in 1990, he got his uh, philosophy degree, and uh, he teaches at my university in comparative arts, and uh, he walked in, told him some, one day, said, can I come over? Said Vladimir, anytime, you know that. He came over and says, let's sit down and let's not talk. And uh, he brought a bottle of vodka. Just, let's just have a drink and sort of be sad. <laughs> said, why? I was walking in the hallway at, in his uh, office. Said, my colleague saw me and said, Vladimir, what's wrong with you? You look sad. <laughs> I'm tired of being happy. <laughs> May I have a moment of sadness? <laughs> yes. So now, so the next step is into other propaganda because this is a body image. 
This is a Soviet body image. You are working class. You're looking forward to the future. Uh, you're leading and you're the avant-garde of evolution. Uh, your progress, uh, uh, you're simple people, but you have the daring, um, the, uh, the vision uh, on the horizon, the utopian society and all of that. That is, these are not just parties, they are telling you what Soviet Union is. And it is in every, on every street corner, uh, Lenin, you know, looking into the future from his uh, uh, Lenin's hat and all of that. So, so here now is the propaganda level, which is deliberate and very powerful um, set of images, and uh, maybe verbal images, to make you identify yourself with that entire ideology. The best propaganda film, if you want to call it advertisement film, is, and uh, till today, uh, uh, triumph, this villain, um, uh, uh, the triumph of the will, one lost triumphus, uh, uh, made by Riefenstahl, Lenny, for Hitler's propaganda. And what is important about that film, there are various high officials, including Gables and so on, speaking. Hitler himself talking. But one common theme across the whole thing is that they did not say anything that would be like rational discourse. No. But everybody, Heil, Heil, 200,000 people in one jump, Heil, Heil. And what image does? Hitler, who was a, an Austrian and he had a very hard time getting uh, German citizenship, but he got it. Okay? And he looked like. Uh, hold this. <laughs> <laughs> Germany. Everything is Germany. 
and those who are not of German blood. They have their, in essence, bad. German blood. What's the German? Is it uh, uh, greenish or reddish? <laughs> it doesn't matter. But it is the blood, the body, you must, and in fact, when he talked to the youth, he said, you must clear yourselves from everything else and completely embody, become the body of Nazi ideology. Embody it. Walk like a Nazi, talk like a Nazi, hide like a Nazi. See, what, a, what, uh, what propaganda aims here is to make the population or a certain group to identify itself completely with the ideology or it's like Christianity or Judaism, Islam. If you want to become uh, Islam, uh, I mean Muslim, you have to completely become a body of the entire Islam. Uh, in your manners, in your thinking, uh, of course, uh, the, uh, they try not to, <laughs> but, but uh, they do it in public. Okay? But at the same time, like uh, in uh, the propaganda of any cult, uh, fundamentalist Christians, I mean, you must become one with Christ. You must be reborn. That means what you were up till then was bad. It's like being taken like a baby to your church and you are reborn a new person, you are going to die and fight and uh, crucify and kill and enjoy in the name of the body of your personality called leader. Okay? So, uh, so this is the kind of uh, uh, introduction to how Propaganda is designed not only to make you think in a way, but it's designed to make you become totally what the embodied language, what the images tell you. Then you will be real German. Then you will be real Lithuanian. If you, mm, as you know, it would be hard to become real Lithuanian. I'm the only one left with real Lithuanian. <laughs> That's a fact. Uh, everyone in Lithuania who knows me, they know that I am the true, true Lithuanian blood. Okay. Uh, embodiment. Uh, the highest standard. Okay. Uh, yeah. A peasant, you know, a Lithuanian peasant. Okay, so this is, um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm running late. You're fine. I'm fine, thank you very much. No. <laughs> So, uh, the, the, uh, in general, advertisement is milder form. You know, they don't uh, mass you in one big place and say, you must destroy everything you have been and you must become uh, Madonna or Boo Boo uh, or whatever, those uh, images or Schwarzenegger. Uh, I mean, what a name, huh? what a name? <laughs> Black Negro <laughs> Schwarzenegger. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's fantastic. And a German. The boot. <laughs> yeah. Well, he had, he had a Nazi tendency. Uh, but that's a forgivable. Uh -huh. Because he's a governor of California and all of that. Only in California that can happen, right? But anyway, but so the propaganda is to abolish your identity that whatever your name names has on all of that, and you have to become a vessel, total. And uh, uh, one more thing, what's in the name? Simple Hyatt. And if you notice the images, Hitler would say Hyatt, although, you know, he would sometimes say Hyatt, but sometimes he revealed another identity that he tried to conceal. Hyatt. <laughs> So, you know, mm -hmm. we will know your other identity. <laughs> <laughs> but then he was an idol, and uh, that's a Roman imperial sign. I am the emperor. 
and Heil in Germanic and in the uh, Indo-European languages, also holy, healthy, wholesome. Uh, hell, hell, uh, light, illumination. He is holy light. And the uh, images that were created to make him holy. First image, I'll finish with that. There is, uh, there are clouds over Stuttgart. And they're filming. Crowds of people are moving in the streets. I mean, streets are full of people. And then they show an aeroplane propeller. And the airplane is above the clouds. And the airplane starts coming down and the clouds part. And the airplane shadow is cast on the ground among the people. And there descends from heaven the savior, the holy man, and everybody comes and hail, hail. The light came down from heaven, the savior, that's a Christian imagery, the saviors come down to save the poor humanity. And he gets elevated, so his little stupid look that he was, in fact, he was very, uh, that, but uh, his propaganda, people knew how to present him as that holy light descending from heaven and being legitimated by everything. The final image, not the final, but one image is this. As he is driving in, the, in his limousine, standing up, Lenny Riefenstahl was a fantastic uh, filmmaker. She would show a statue. A peasant with two geese, you know, solid peasant. And it looked like when Hitler is passing, that statue would follow Hitler, legitimate Hitler. Next statue, uh, according to all the psychological, uh, you know, uh, understanding um, uh, from texts and all of that, how do you judge a person's intelligence? Well, what person has achieved? So Goethe, the writer, the scientist, and everything else, is regarded as the greatest uh, intelligence in human history. And there's Goethe's statue. And Goethe with his book. And Hitler passes by, and uh, Goethe, it looks like Goethe is saying, OK, you're a good guy. Propaganda legitimation of this nobody who became conqueror of the world. Uh, although he made one mistake, he thought, he began to believe that he is uh, 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 holy and light and uh, the highest intelligence and the military genius. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hitler ruined the war. Yeah. In uh, the Baltics there was the, the bunker where Hitler uh, stayed with his generals, was known as the Wolf's Lair, Wilko Walla. And two generals got out of there, you know, to smoke outside. Hitler went inside. And they said, isn't it about time that we should relieve this corporal? Because in military, Hitler was Grandini's corporal. Mm -hmm. Isn't it time that we should relieve this corporal from his duties? <laughs> <laughs> and of course, uh, uh, they lost the war uh, in our favor. So thank you very much. I will uh, now desist uh, and uh, questions maybe will come later. <laughs>